Welcome Mr. John Vaughn and he is going to come and he's going to tell you about some really cool tools, some really cool software. He's a software engineer and he's going to tell you exactly how to get those kinds of tools. Hey guys and girls, any transgenders in here? None? You guys want to hold my live? So what's up? I'm John Vaughn. I'm not a marketer and stuff. I'm just here to uh, talk to you guys apparently about how to build a multi-million dollar software company with no sales or marketing skills from the ground up. All right. Would you guys like to uh, learn all my, all my secrets and all my tricks? How many of you guys want to get the shortcut to a million dollar a year? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck you guys, you guys are lazy. <laughs> there's, uh, there's no shortcut, by the way, so. <laughs> Honestly, this is something, I, I'm being serious, I see this all the time, I see so many people in the entrepreneur space, and they spend actually more time looking for a shortcut and looking for some tricks or some hacks than the amount of time it would actually take them just to go do the fucking work. I don't know why, but there is no shortcut here. I did, I want to let you guys know that um, I did get a, a text message to remind me that I'm not supposed to curse a lot. Um, and I'm going to let you guys know I'm not going to pay attention to that because I don't usually listen to people. You can text if you are present at this event. You can text right now this word present to this phone number right now if you want to do that. And I have a present for you, if you do that. Um, so I'm only going to leave that up there for a second so you guys can see it. All you got to do is text present. Now this is where my software comes into play. And you know I'm not really going to talk to you so much about my software. What I am going to talk to you about, though, is I'm not going to give you my story, my life story, which is what a lot of marketers like to do, because they like to get you to emotionally connect with them and get down on your knees crying and then all happy and stuff, because then you know, you'll buy stuff. I don't really care about that. So you guys got that? Yeah. All right. Great. All right. So uh, I'm just going to go over here and give a little bit of information about my company. It's four years old. Uh, my, my actual company, all right? So my actual company with actual employees is four years old. I had a company before then. There was literally no one there at my company. It was literally just me all by myself. And Nobody else, all right? So we're not gonna talk about that. I had that for like a year and a half and I'll kind of get into a little bit about that. Um, I got over 60 full-time employees that work at our company now. I've done over $5 million in sales revenue in the last four years. Oh fuck, I got zero clients. I actually don't work for anybody. What's that mean? No service or low throughput activities. If you don't know what throughput is, you've probably ne never been in manufacturing. I'll tell you all about that and what that is. But I don't actually have clients. I don't work for people anymore. Literally, uh, not so long ago, we celebrated our four-year anniversary, and I put 60 people on an airplane. Many of them have never been on an airplane before. I flew them for a five-day vacation, and uh, we hung out. We smoked weed. A couple of us took some LSD. We drunk. Um, we hung out. Remember that last guy? He said something about transparency, right? Um, I'm really, really transparent. And see, here's the thing. I've met with several entrepreneurs, and some of them tell me all the time, they're like, you know, John, Wish we could just be open and honest like you, you know. If I were to say the things you say, it, it would kill my personal brand. Well, if your brand is a lie, then yes, maybe that's true. So if your entire brand is built on you not being able to be yourself and be who you are and who you're happy being, you should rethink your entire life and your business model, okay? If you can't be yourself, why did you start a company? If you can't be yourself and be who you want to be, then you're in the wrong business. You're doing the wrong thing, all right? So yes, we, we do smoke weed. Um, so now you've heard, you've heard several people here talk about software. The lovely Kim Dang, she was here. She talked about software. Everybody pretty much talked about software. I've got 10 SaaS softwares in the market. I'm building more as we speak right now. I'm not doing it, somebody else is. Uh, Make over 50, how many of you guys, wait, how many of you guys and girls, transgenders, are under 35 years old? <laughs> Woohoo! Come on! Whoa! Oh. Check that out! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> See, you guys should have text, you should have text present. 
You should have texted present. You, you had to be the first one, buddy. That was the first one? Yeah. See? You should have just text. You should just text my number. So how many of you guys, again, are, are under 35? Who's under 35? Okay, so a couple of you guys. Who made uh, more than a million dollars last year? Just me, under 35, made more than a million dollars. How many of you guys make more than 10K a month on Facebook? From Facebook, organic traffic. Woohoo! How many, how many of you guys make more than 20K a month from Facebook? How many of you guys make more than 30K a month from Facebook? 40K a month? Let's go, kid. 50K a month? Did you guys know that you guys can make a shit ton of money from Facebook, organic traffic? That's what I'm going to ta talk to you guys about. Uh, I got over 8,000 users in my software. That's a lot of users. Not a lot. Uh, oh, yeah, I haven't invested any money in my company, by the way. So not any of my money, actually. Uh, so I got partners here. Kim's in my partner program. It's in my partner program. Partner, 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 partner. Some of you guys signed up to my partner program. It's just your money I invest. So it's your guys' money. All right, so who am I? Um, I'm not a marketer or salesperson, in case you didn't realize. I'm not a software engineer. Actually, I am a software engineer. Someone, whoever made that slide, <laughs> he did that on purpose. I'm actually, so I, I'm actually a software engineer, all right? I fucking engineered that shit. All right, I did not actually graduate high school, okay? So um, I told you I wasn't gonna give you my, my life story, but it sucked, all right? Uh, mental abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, all that shit. Went through that, lived that first 18 years of my life. After that, kind of got into drugs, alcohol, beating the fuck out of people because that felt good. Um, and then, you know, it, it hit me. I was actually sitting in jail one day, and I realized that, that those things were actually my biggest, my biggest strengths that I could actually have. Like, like I said the F word a couple times, right? Um, it's, it's actually in my slide. And you guys would be, you guys would be surprised at the reactions I get sometimes from, from business people, okay? People who want to build a multi-million dollar company and they hear one curse word and it's like, you, you message me and I don't wanna put you on the spot, but you message me, why? Because you thought people would be upset about that word, right? But here's the thing, you guys wanna build a multi-million dollar company, you guys wanna go out in business, what do you think you're gonna find out there? You don't think people out there say fuck? And if that actually, if that's what actually drives you crazy and you're like, oh my God, I, I, I can't do anything anymore. Well, how far is your business going to get? All right. So I realized that everything I went through in my life, ah, it's, it's my biggest strength. So I didn't graduate high school. I got kicked out. Oh, I actually didn't graduate college neither. Uh, I am a software engineer. I did take time to learn a skill. How many of you guys feel like you have a skill that you've learned that you can sell to somebody? Oh, okay, let me try this other way. How many of you people feel like you don't have a skill? Well, you, you're pretty good at spending money, <laughs> all right? So I, I took time to learn a skill. I took time to learn how to be a software engineer. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a business owner. I've got a very colorful background. So how many of you guys actually want my blueprint? Yeah. Everybody, you guys want my blueprint? All right. There, there is no blueprint. There, there was a curse word there that somebody pulled out, okay? My only curse word in my slide. Um, literally, this, I, I'm not joking, here. You guys may think this is funny, I'm not joking. All right, so I got out of jail. I'm not gonna tell you why I went to jail. It wasn't, I didn't kill anybody or anything like, like that. It wasn't anything major. I went through a crisis in my life. Um, and so anyways, I, I got out of jail. I didn't have a driver's license. I had to get a job. You literally wanna know how I started my company? I fucking Googled it. I went to Google how to get a remote job as a software engineer. I'm done, just like that, Googled it. Found out that there's jobs, you, you were talking about before, you know, Odesk. I literally went to Odesk, I created a profile. I'm a software engineer, I can build your software. So if you guys aren't willing to Google it, all right, here's the thing. And this is why I ask you guys, hey, do you guys want a blueprint, do you guys want secrets? The people who look for that, they don't, I mean our keynote left, but he would tell you the same thing. They don't make it very far. If you guys are going to spend your life and your, and your business, like if you're gonna leave your business up to waiting for somebody to come give you the secrets, eh, might as well go back and get a job working for somebody else is what you might as well go ahead and do, okay? There, I could tell you what I did, and I'm going to tell you what I did, okay? I could tell you what I did, that may not work for you. All these marketers, they can tell you they've got, you know, 
one, two, three, step by step, here's full blueprint, here's everything you need to know, ah, it may or may not work for you. What will work for you is you go out there, you try to figure out, hey, will this work? You look to see, did it work? Did it not work? And then you go from there. So I don't have a blueprint. I don't know how to use this thing. All right, so um, what I'm gonna just go through is I'm gonna go through it and tell you what I would do after knowing what I know now from doing what I've done so far. Okay, so that's all I'm gonna show you. Um, and by the way, I sent you a link to this if you uh, text present to that, to that phone number. I sent you uh, a link to this. That's the end of my slides, by the way. I don't have any slides. Actually, I got one more slide. You guys wanna see my last slide? There ain't two. Slide. Did they get another hundred bucks? I don't know. Oh man, I lied. I don't have any Chris $100 bills. I gave, my, I gave all my Chris $100 bills. I gave my last one. I'm going to give you. I'm gonna give you four uh, coronavirus points. Well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so so I'm gonna tell you only. Do I really need this? Do I gotta hold this. I gotta hold this. All right, so I'm gonna really tell you only what I've learned so far. All right, I'm not gonna do anything else other than tell you what I've learned so far and what I would do if I started over. Okay. Now our keynote left, and he was all about this. Okay, so this was his whole deal, all right? Now, I'm in James's program, all right? He talked about Mentor Lab. You know why I joined Mentor Lab? I have never felt in my life like I needed a coach. Actually, my dad was a bastard, and he was a coach, all right? Um, so I never felt like, hey, I needed a coach. But I saw Mentor Lab. I even saw James's program, and instantly I knew, hey, if I sign up for that, she came from there, all right? I knew if I sign up for that, and this is what a lot of people don't want to do. A lot of people don't want to spend money. What are you guys doing? Do you guys not even understand? It said, if you're the first person that comes down here. <laughs> it says it right there. I did it again. If you are the first person, get out of here. I'm not giving you guys no more money. I'm giving you information. <laughs> so, I joined James's program just for leverage. Okay, I joined his 10K coaching program. I made over 100K from people inside that program. For leverage. So this is the first and most important thing I would want you guys to remember from, from the very, very good. Anybody know anything about physics? Do you guys know anything about physics, science, how the world works? Do you guys know what levers do? You guys have any idea what levers do? Woohoo! Levers allow you to move a large amount of weight without a lot of force because it's some type of science stuff. All right, I'm not going to bore you guys with the science stuff. So start with this, your entire mindset. Now most of your, most of your business it's all right here, okay, literally. It sounds taboo that it's mindset, mindset. Trust me, most of your business, it's, it's your mind. It's how you think. That's your biggest key, all right? So start with leverage. Now, you guys all have a skill, right? Yep. Awesome. How many of you guys go live on Facebook? How many times a day you guys go live? You don't go live. I got one of my partners, my business wife here, Fatima. She still won't go live for some reason. Don't know why. I put a slide up. I, I wasn't joking. You guys can follow me on Facebook. You can see how much money I make because I'm transparent. I show it all the time. It comes from organic traffic on Facebook from me creating content. Okay? It's one of your biggest, this is one of your biggest keys right here. So I'm going to put this above there. You guys feel like you know what you're doing? Anybody feels like you know exactly what you're doing, what you need to do? I, I sure don't. I didn't have a blueprint. Literally, I had no idea what to do when I started a company. Had no clue what to do. But that's great. Document your process. As you document your process, you create content. This content is evergreen. You know, today, I've got a software. It's called Text in Bulk. You guys probably never heard of it before. Some of you guys may have heard of it before. I got, uh, I've completely rebuilt it, and I've called it Chirply. All right? Now, I've got YouTube videos that are three years old, literally, you go to this software and it says right there whenever you go there, don't buy this software, we're discontinuing this software, we rebuilt it and named it Chirply. I've got YouTube videos that are three years old, still 
two people a week, come and sign up for that software. It's $47 a month. I haven't promoted it in two years, literally three-year-old YouTube videos. Why? Because I created content. All along my journey, I've just created content, all right? So that's what you guys should be doing. Every single day, create content. You don't know what you're doing, you think people, all right. You guys think people are gonna laugh at you? How many of you guys feel like, hey, somebody's gonna laugh at you? Somebody's gonna poke fun at you guys? This is going to be a mindset thing, all right? This is you, right there. This is you. This other people looking at you. Fuck those people. <laughs> That's it. That's simple. Seriously. It's like, you, do you, all right. You guys, how, how many of you guys here want to, I know you guys all want to make more, more money, but for, for what? You guys want to go buy a, a fancy car? You guys want to go buy a nice big house? You guys, need, you guys need external people to look at you and validate you so you can be happy with yourself. That's why you get scared to create content, okay? You get scared to create content and go live because you're scared what other people are going to think of, it, of you, what other people are gonna say about you. The sooner you can get rid of that and you can say, hey, who's gotta live your life? Who wakes up and looks at you in the mirror every single day? Not fucking me, I'm not looking at you. That's you. So if you can validate yourself, then everything else goes away. You lose all your fears, all right? So learn how to validate yourself. I'm gonna erase you from my board because you don't need to be there anymore, all right? So create content every single day. Well, that sums up most of it. Wow. Oh, offers. Offers are really important. We're not gonna talk about that. I mean, we are gonna talk about that but not right now. Document, content. Every single day, content, content, content. That's what I do, every single day. I create content, lots and lots of content. I've never had a plan, never once had a plan. All right, so what did I do? How did I start my business? I told you first, I Googled it, all right? I had a skill, you guys all have a skill. Now, who's the easiest person that you can get to buy your, to buy your skill? Somebody who's looking for that, that service, all right? So identify those people. I went out, I found exactly the people who are looking for my service. I, how did I know those people? I went to, I Googled it. How to find a job as a remote software engineer. How to find a job as a freelance web developer. All right, you can make a Google search just like that. You can insert your little whatever it is that you do and you will probably find places on the internet where people are congregating looking for your services. All right, so you go there, you create an account, you offer your services. Now the first thing, that's literally all I did, all right? So, along your journey, as you create this content, collect as much as this as you can, all right? Be a long-term thinker, not a short-term thinker. When I first got started, I didn't care about money. I needed money, but I knew I, I, it, took me a, it took me a little while to realize this in, in business that, that most people, the reason that they, they fail in business is because they have no cash flow, all right? That's why you're so short-sighted. The reason that you can't see down the road is because you don't have cash flow for today. So, from the very get-go, how do you build cash flow? Somebody else talked about this. All right. This is how you start building your cash flow. Passive income. Kim has already been nice enough to talk to us about ways to build passive income. How many of you guys use a software every day? Who, who uses a software every day? Everybody, you don't use a software? What do you do that you don't use software? She uses software, everybody uses software. So everybody uses software. So software is a great way to build passive income. Your other option, all right, your other option is information, all right? I have info products that I give for free that literally lead into other info products that cost money, that lead into software that cost money. This you can start creating right now today, all right? Right now today. Don't wait a year, don't wait two years, don't wait three years because the longer you don't have cash flow in your business, when I was running a company, it took me a long time to get to the point where I had enough cash flow where I could tell the people I didn't want to work with that I didn't want to work with them because I didn't need their money, all right? So 
you guys know about opportune cost, right? Cash flow, not having cash flow is one of the biggest reasons that you have a high opportune cost because you take that client today and they're like, oh, I'll pay you 2K a month for your little marketing service. And then you're like, oh, I need some money. And yeah, I'll go do it. I don't know what you guys do, but you do something. And then guess what happens every single time? One week, two weeks later, here comes some other person. Oh, I'll pay you 5K a month. Now what do you do? You tell the, the 2K guy to go screw himself because you got somebody else or you tell that guy you can't work for him. If you tell that guy you can't work for him, you just lost 3K a month. Why? Because you didn't have cash flow. All right. So the only way you can start, Kim already told you exactly how to do it. You start building simple softwares. All right. You start building some type of simple software, some continuity. A lot of you guys have no continuity. That's key for your cash flow is have continuity. Have somebody who comes in, they pay you every single month for something. You start with a simple software. Every software I have, I didn't pay for it. Somebody else paid for it. I didn't build it. All right. So now how do you build these assets out? Well, again, this is something that I, it's probably not any of you people because you people seem very, very nice. Um, and I didn't see any fucking Lambos out in the, out in the, <laughs> out there. But, but look, here's the deal. Don't go beyond your means. All right. I know a lot of, you, uh, a lot of people, you make an extra thousand dollars and what happens? You got an extra $1,500 in expenses all of a sudden because you don't know basic math. You're like, oh, all right, I got an extra $1,000. I'm going to go spend an extra $1,500. Don't do that. I'm serious. Don't do that. It's that simple. You take that money that you have extra, and this is how I've built a company to 60 employees. It's when I get extra money, I don't go buy Lamborghinis. I can go right now. I go to their Lamborghini dealership. I go buy 10 of them cash right now, but I don't. You know why? Because instead, I take that money, I build assets. Because assets, look, a fucking Lamborghini is a liability. That's it. It's a liability. A software, that's an asset. That thing produces me cash every single day. Right here, you know what I've done today? I gave you guys a bunch of free stuff. Gave you guys some free snacks. I made over 2K today. Haven't done anything. Not, in, not including some of you guys bought some of my stuff out there. Well, I'm talking about like literally doing nothing, just people's their payments come in. I don't even have to do anything for it. It's cash flow. It's free money that comes in every single day. So you start building this up as soon as you can, and you do that from your profits from... All right. This is no... This is where you guys want to be. You guys want to be here. You guys are probably over here. Before I became a software engineer, I was a software engineer. What that means is before I became an actual software engineer, I worked for a manufacturing company and I was a lean process auditor, all right? So there'd be some machine, there'd be some like lines of people, they would, you know, make some stuff on that machine and I would come and be like, oh, you do that, you do that, you do that, oh shit, your machine broke. I'd go find out, figure out how to, how to fix the machine. Sometimes I'd be like, look, if we move that machine right here, like three inches over there, guess what? We make an extra million dollars in the year, all right? So in lean manufacturing, they teach you that you want to match capacity to throughput. Now throughput, you think, all right, a good example of, a, uh, of throughput is you guys all go out to eat somewhere, right? Now when you order your steak dinner, throughput happens. You place an order, somebody back there, they cooking your steak. They probably screwing it up, but they cooking your steak, all right? <laughs> they are doing actual work. They're doing actual labor. You sell a marketing cert. Never mind. You sell a marketing service, you do nothing. Okay? Uh, if you're not an average marketer and you sell a marketing service, then after you sell your service, you got to go do something. You got to do what? You got to figure out who that person is, why they are, what they sell, who they sell to, why those people want to buy it, how, what type of messaging those people like, then how to run creatives, how to get them to actually buy. Do those people have all their follow ups in place for actual conversions? That's a lot of stuff. That's all throughput activities. All right? This is not scalable. Any moms in here? Because this is a lie I hear all the time. Not that you guys are moms, but <laughs> how to scale your, I'm going to teach you guys how to scale your agency. Bullshit. Moms, how, can I, could, could I teach you moms how to scale your mom? Can, is there a way that I can, like, how many kids you got? Three. Let's say I give you 10 more right now. Is that doable? <laughs> you go crazy, right? You, you can't scale that. Just like throughput activities, this is not scalable. As much as people say this is scalable, this is not scalable. Who runs a marketing, marketing agency? Fucking hey, I'm in the right room. <laughs> you? You? All right, let's say I give you 100 new clients today. Can you take them? I must say yes. No, you can't. No. You're full of shit. Can you take them if I give you 100 new clients today? No. 
No, you can't. You can't unless what? Look, I don't have clients anymore, but if I did accept clients, all right, and I had 100 new people say, hey, John, come build me a software, I can't. I only got 60, I got 67 employees, all right? That's not, a, that's not enough to service 100 people. You know what I have to do? I got to go hire more engineers. I got a three-month lead time to get an engineer from the time I go start, you know, writing a job description, looking for an engineer, get them in, interview them, finally get them into my office working. That's three-month lead time. It's not scalable whatsoever. Now, when my little hundred clients, when they disappear, you know what happens? I got to get rid of my engineers. I got to fire them. This is never scalable. Whoever's telling you this is scalable, they, whoever's telling you this is scalable, they have a course on how to scale this shit, and that's what they're doing. This right here, this is the only thing that's scalable, all right? A software sale and a digital asset, an info course. Nothing else can be scaled. All right. If you go to Webster and you look at what it means to scale, it means that you can adapt to ups and downs. Anything that revolves throughput, you can't because when a down comes, you got to fire people. When an up comes, you got to hire people. What happens if I give you, and I have given you over a thousand users in group convert, what happens if I give you a thousand more? What happens to you? Nothing. You're fucking climbing a rock somewhere. <laughs> You're just out climbing a rock somewhere. Nothing happens to you. All right. What happens? Well, who, who's got a course? Anybody got a digital course where they sell stuff? Who's got a course? Anybody got a course? What, what's your course about? Affiliate marketing. affiliate marketing. Sounds like a bunch of bullshit, but yeah. So affiliate marketing. Yes, YouTube is awesome. So you know why I don't like affiliate marketing? Because, because in a room full of affiliate marketers, if I say, hey, I'm, I'm looking for the best steak in town, they're just going to tell me to sign up for ClickFunnels, and that's it. <laughs> So, so you got a YouTube course. Yeah. It's just digital info recorded somewhere. Yeah, I recorded everything. And so, if I send you a thousand people today, no, quick if I send you a thousand people today, what happens? Uh, they'll be in my monthly membership. Done. Send you two thousand. Does it change your day? No. Scalable. Totally scalable. So go to this. All right. Leverage this. This is exactly what I did. I would get clients. All right. Now. When you get a client, some of you guys don't want to have any workers. Don't want to have any workers. You need workers, all right? You need people from the get-go, from day one, to do your job for you so that you don't have to do it. My, my very first client, I had an employee, all right? What I would do is I would get a client, and whenever I got that client, I would match him with an engineer, I would give him another engineer, and I would get me one engineer. So I would give my client two engineers. My client would pay for one engineer. I would give him two engineers. Now, granted, granted, I leveraged taking myself, moving all the way across the world to some place where I could go where I'm working in the US market, but I'm living in India. And I got like a 10% labor cost over there. So for one engineer over here, I could get 10 engineers over there. You guys don't have to physically move. Kim already told you, places you can find online, all right? So I would get a client, they would hire one engineer, I would give them two engineers, why? Because I don't need money today, I need money tomorrow, and I know if I make that person happy today, he's gonna buy stuff from me tomorrow, all right? So I made that person happy, and then instead of taking my profit, buying a nice Rolex, showing all my friends, I bought more engineers, I had them build out this, because this is more important, than your Rolex or anything else, that is more important. Because this, once, see, today, all right, here's the today. You guys want me to build you a software? Literally, I will tell you, and don't be offended, I will tell you, give me a million dollars and get the fuck out of my face. Go get somebody else to, buy your, to build your software. Why, because I don't need your money. Why, because I got this. So now I get to be very, very picky and choosy on who I work with. I got two clients I'm building software for, all right? One of them, I own half their company. It's freaking awesome. They pay me to build the software. I make profit building the software, and I own half their company whenever it's actually profitable. Now, how did I get to be able to do that? I got cash flow, all right? And then once you have cash flow, then you get to make a lot better decisions in your business, all right? You don't, you're not looking every single day, well, how do I pay my bills? Because you have cash flow, all right? So I found people who were looking for my service. That was the easy part. I went, to, I, I went to Upwork, Toptal, Elance, Odesk. Then after that, I started to identify 
who is the best person who can buy my services? All right, who is the very, very best person that can buy my services? Now, I don't know who's the best person that can buy your services, but for me, I'm selling software engineering services, so the best person for me to buy is another software company. Whoever's, whoever has my, who, whoever's, I mean, they're hiring the same people I'm hiring, they're selling the same thing that I'm selling. Guess what? That means they need my stuff. If I sell cookies, you wanna know who needs my services? The bakery. That guy needs my services. That guy will buy my cookies all day long, every day, especially if I can produce them, produce them better and cheaper than they can. You know what they're gonna do? They're gonna have a bakery. They're not gonna bake anything. I'm just gonna bake cookies. I'm gonna bring them to them. They're gonna sell them. And that's all I did, all right? I started targeting software engineering firms. I found who is my ideal avatar, the easiest person to buy my stuff, and I started cold messaging them, okay? Cold email. Hope you guys are liking my blueprint and you're following along with point one and two and three. All right, so I started cold outreach to these people. Now I used to do this on autopilot. As you can probably imagine, I built a software to automate all this, all right? But whether you use softwares, whether you don't, that's completely up to you and how much of your time you want to leverage, all right? I built a software just because I used to spend 14 hours a day going and mining data and finding these people so I could contact them, all right? Now, whether you use software, whether you do it manually, that's totally up to you. But cold outreach, you can get a lot. I made over $3 million, this right here, cold outreach to software firms. Now, when you do your cold outreach, since I have a software, I get to see so many people's cold outreach because they put their cold outreach in my software and I get to see exactly what they're doing. Most people, 98% of the people, they do it wrong, all right? You are going to contact somebody. That person that you're going to contact that wants that you want them to give you money, guess what they want? They want money, exactly. So they want money, so what's your approach to them? If you go in, if this person, if they see that you are trying to sell them something, ah, they're probably not going to respond to you whatsoever. But if there's an unknown and they're like, oh hey, this person might buy something from me, they will respond to you. You guys know what your number one goal is when you do cold outreach? Anybody know what your number one goal is? Not <laughs> exactly. Get somebody to open your email, reply back to it. That is it. You're not looking for a sale. You're not looking for anything else. You're looking for somebody to open your email, reply back to it. How do you do that? You don't use, hey, I'm John. I'm a software engineer. I'm the best in the world. I got a development firm in India. Here's my rates. You guys want to start a project with me? You want to know what, what I would do? Literally what I would do, I got a WordPress developer sitting over here. He needs a job. So I go find a bunch of software engineering firms. I literally send them an email. has one sentence. Do you do WordPress projects? Do you make WordPress plugins? All right, so do you see what I'm doing is I am asking my target, I'm asking them something that relates to a money-making activity for them and it directly qualifies them, are they a buyer or not? If they don't build WordPress plugins, they probably don't need my WordPress engineer, all right? Either way, guess what? They're looking at me as a potential client, I've, I've contacted them over something that's a money-making activity for them, so they're gonna respond to me. If they don't respond to me, you know what that means? They don't want any more business. They don't, they don't run a real company. They're, you can't help them, they can't help themselves. If they do respond to you, well then they just qualify themselves. Once you get that response, then you carry on with your sales process, whatever that is. I don't really know about it um, because I'm not a salesperson. All right, so, so literally I built, I built my entire company on this for the first three years. After three years, uh, I had worked with enough business owners, I'd worked with enough people, and I was like, I don't really like people, in case you guys can't tell, I'm not a big fan of people. Uh, my ultimate goal is to put a computer chip in all your guys' brains and reprogram you, all right? So, so I, I was done with the client service model, and the reason why, it's not because I hate people, because I don't, I like people, you guys are all great, uh, unless you're a marketer. This right here, this is why I didn't want clients, because throughput is not scalable, and I realized this. This is short-term money. This. Ask my guy back here. Ask my guy back here what, it, it, what's going to actually give you real money. Going to work every day, working a nine to five, or taking your paycheck and investing in an asset. What is it? That, that's what's going to actually make you money. So I didn't want this because I realized this is not gonna make me money, I wanted this. I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know how to do this transaction. So, 
See how, see, how my, see how cool my job is? See how I don't care what you guys think if you guys are like, who's this fucking weirdo, you know, with weird socks? Who cares, you know? Yes, my socks are weird. This is Bowser, and this is, uh, this is my middle finger. So I wanted to get from here to there. I had no plan, just like when I started my company, I had no plan, all right? So what I did... You guys have probably seen that. That's, that's it, that's literally all I did, okay? So what I did, I found, how many of you guys actually enjoy your job and what, what it is that you're doing? If your hand is not raised, you should quit your job. Especially, look, if you work for yourself, if you run your own company and you don't like what you do, do you have a mental issue? Like you literally have a mental issue, all right? So what, how did I provide value? I found something that I enjoyed doing and I was good at and I was passionate about and I could do for free. For me, it was building chatbots. I love to build chatbots. If you guys ever get my chatbot, if you guys ever get my chatbot, you're gonna give me some money, all right? That's what's gonna happen. I like to build chatbots. So what I did, now I saw all these marketers out there on the internet and they're selling their little digital courses. I'm like, oh, I could probably do that. You know, they're selling their marketing courses. And so I created, I started every single day, I started building chatbots and as I built chatbots, Documented my journey. I literally told people what I'm going to do. From, from my very first partner that ever joined my partner program, I literally told them from the ground up what I was going to do because I was documenting my entire process. I was literally telling them, look, I'm a service-based company right now. I'm relying on throughput. I don't want to do this. I'm going to a product-based, no throughput company, and I'm going to do it right here on Facebook. I'm going to get all you random strangers on Facebook to give me money. And today I usually make over 70K a month from random people on Facebook that give me money, all right? Through this process, I was good at building chatbots, so what I did is I documented my journey, I created content, I created a group about chatbots, and I just literally went in there and I taught people every single day for free. Why? Because the marketers were charging $4,997 for their chatbot course. Don't worry, because you got like, $49,997 worth of value whenever you bought it. So I just gave it for free, all right? 12 months, I did that for 12 months. For 12 months, every single day, I created content. I created content, I created content. Somebody didn't buy my stuff, I didn't care. You know why I didn't care? Because I was passionate about the stuff that I did. I actually enjoyed it. I didn't really care if people bought it or not. So I created content, created content for 12 whole months. I had a chatbot group, People come in, what do you want built? Oh, I'll build your chatbot for you, here you go. As I build your chatbot for you, I'm just going to make content around it and that's going to go in my chatbot course. Then I started my chatbot course, $10 a month. I still got people on that $10 a month course, all right? So you create value. Now you can do this in other people's groups and some people have talked about doing that in other people's groups. I don't create value in other people's groups anymore because they kick you out of their groups for that, actually is what they do. That's, what a lot of, that's literally what a lot of group owners do. Whenever you start providing value, they're like, mm, watch out for that guy, Let it, get him out. So now, literally, my entire Facebook profile, if you look at my, uh, at my Facebook profile, that's where all my money comes from. Every day, I try to put something valuable there. I come to Facebook, I be myself, my honest self. Sometimes I'm vulnerable, and I talk about, you know, my sadness or whatever, you know? Uh, but I just try to connect with people and I put as much value as I can on Facebook. And then, like our lovely Kim Deng said, I have people all the time tell me I make too many offers. John, you make too many offers. Well, if you made as many offers as me, you'd have as much money as I do. You make less, you don't have as much money. So create as much value as you can, all right? You guys, whatever, you, you know there's so much stuff in your guys' head that, that you guys think is natural, and you probably think, well, everybody knows this shit. Everybody knows it. No, they don't. Trust me, they, they, don't, they don't know it. So whatever you're passionate about, start creating content about that. Have a, I'm gonna put this on, because this is um, like third step in my blueprint. It's long-term vision. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I'm giving you guys the exact same blueprint that was given to me, all right? <laughs> I don't know how to spell vision, but that says vision, all right? So make sure you keep this in mind. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when you guys go and make your little affiliate post today about ClickFunnels, 
Somebody may not buy it. They may not buy it today. It may be a month, two months. It may be 12 months. It literally took me 12 months on the internet to convince people that I'm not some crazy, drugged up white guy with monkeys. It took 12 months, literally. It took me 12 months of actually showing up and providing content and providing value until people were like, you know what? This guy's weird, eh, but I like him. I'll buy his stuff. So just do that. Show up every day, create as much value as you can, create as much content as you can. I have a training course at $17 a month. Every single thing inside that training course is on my YouTube channel. Every single thing inside that training course is in my free Facebook group. Every single thing inside that training course I put on my Facebook profile. People still pay for it. They're still going to pay for it because you know what? There's no way you can actually go watch every single thing that's on my Facebook profile. So don't be scared about that. Create as much value as you can for free. And after you create enough value, don't forget that. All right? People are not going to pay you for this unless you stick it inside this. All right? So I see a lot of people, they put a lot of value on Facebook. Don't ever make an offer. Got to make an offer. Get them to buy. And that's it. Literally all I've done. Let's go out. This is really important, collect this, but go out. If you don't have a way right now to get passive income through no throughput activities, you have to sell a service. You gotta sell hot dogs, cat litter, marketing services, which is about the same, something. <laughs> you gotta sell something, all right? So maximize that. As you're selling stuff, document everything you're doing, create content around what you're doing so that the world can understand, oh wow, this person knows this and, and that. Collect this social proof because it's gonna help you in the long run. Social proof, you mean like testimonials? Um, yeah, not just, te not just testimonials, but um, to give you an example, I've got lots of partners and um, I've got a software called Friend Connector and just sitting back there just today, I saw some, I saw somebody who's not even actually in my partner program who posted a, a, a social proof of somebody else in a chat message talking about how powerful my software friend connector is. Okay, I just screenshot it and guess what's going on in my funnel? <laughs> that guy talking about it. So social proof just, social proof doesn't just have to be, you know, someone giving you a direct testimonial, all right? It could be somebody, social proof could be as simple as, I, sometimes I take social proof from my competitors, I go to their ads and I find where just natural people in the ads are validating a problem, where they're confirming that, okay, hey, this thing is actually a problem. That's social proof. Social proof is just other people talking about whatever it is that you want people to think about, all right? You heard somebody talked about Chirply. All right, Chirply will help you connect with your leads within 60 seconds of them becoming a lead so you can, come, so you can become the first responder. Now, I'll find on LinkedIn a bunch of ads where people talk about how important that is to be the first responder. That's social proof to me because now I can just grab that. That's not me telling them that. That's some random stranger saying that this is important. Okay, well, you're not going to believe me because I'm selling you shit, all right? And if you do believe me, you're dumb. If you're going to believe me and I'm trying to sell you something, you're not real smart. But <laughs> You believe the other, I'm not joking, I'm serious. If you're literally, the, the person that has a program for you and they're like, this is what you need, this is the best thing, you should buy this. If you're, you're literally gonna take their face value for that, even my partner program, if I tell you my partner program is the best thing in the world and I got a spot, you can put your credit card right out there and sign up for it. And if you wanna take my word for it, you're dumb. You would be dumb just to take, cause I'm the one selling it to you. All right, so people don't want that. But if you can get an outside perspective and the outside perspective can actually validate all your all the problems that you're solving people actually answer people listen to that so quick question on your values and offers what, on youtube a lot of people love my videos on being ads and affiliate marketing but i don't have a product on that because it really wasn't something i desired to sell but it gets a lot of love so you're saying i could take like six of my being ads videos and charge for that even though it's free for sure. People do it every single day. You want to know what marketers do? I'll, I'll, you want to know what marketers do? Marketers will literally take my free software where I offer free software and they will charge people $5 to tell them where my free software is at because that's what marketers do. They'll be like, hey, you want all this software? Here's $1,000 worth of software. I give it away for free and the marketer puts the gate up and they're like, hey, $5 and I'll tell you how you get $1,000 uh, worth of software for free. They go in, they pay the $5, they send them to my free funnel. 
So yes, can you sell something that you give away for free? Yeah, people do all the time. James does it all the time. <laughs> totally. It's, it's a convenience thing. It's totally a convenience thing. And trust me, I don't want to talk about how stupid people are because they're not that stupid. They're great. So yes, you, 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 can, you can totally do that. But this is your guys' goal. You guys have any other questions? No. No other questions today? I could. Do you want me to? Well, I should I tell them about my software? Do I have time for that? Yeah. So it's all it's all over my Facebook. Literally, all I do on all I do on Facebook is I use Facebook as a tool to sell stuff. That's it. I don't have friends in real life, uh, or on or on Facebook. All right. Uh, I use Facebook, and some of you guys are not ready to go all in. And if you guys want to actually be, if, if you guys want to be mediocre, that's fine. I'm not going to judge you if you guys want to be mediocre, all right? But if you actually want to build something great, if you want to build a legacy, if you want to build an empire, you're not going to do it being mediocre. You're not going to do it by saying, well, you know what? My mom's on my Facebook. I don't want her to see my, I don't want her to see my offers, you know? Why? Your mom's not going to support you? Get a new mom. That's all I can say. <laughs> Get a new mom. So... Everything about my software is on Facebook. Um, I have a lot of different software, so I'm not going to talk about them all. But basically, our software is allow you to go from cold lead to red hot buyer. So we do all the way from we do all the way from lead generation all the way to give me some money. All right. So we got a software for everything in between. Is there any specific questions that you want to ask me about my software that I can? I'm always, I'm always building something new. I'm actually building a, a new software called QB, uh, which is pretty awesome, especially if you guys are interested in getting into, you know, building a simple software, building a Chrome, Chrome extension, because a lot of times what happens, uh, a lot of times what happens, like, look, here's the deal. Somebody said this a little bit earlier today. I don't know who said it, but they said something like, you get what you pay for, right? Um, if you pay $75 for a funnel, guess what you get? If you spend $50 on building a software, guess what you get? <laughs> now, can that $50 software generate you money? Yes, it can. What should you do with that money? You should invest it in building an actual asset. Like every one of you guys today, right now, you guys could go to Code Canyon, and you could literally find the software from them, download it, install it on a server, boom, you got your own software. All right, and you can go market it, and you can make some money. But your best bet is to go and actually build an asset. So we have a new software coming called QB, and it's literally it's it's awesome. I'm going to show it to Kim a little bit later, and it, it allows you to do what most marketers don't do when they build a software. Because what happens with a lot of see, I don't build stuff. I don't. I've never built a software for another person. I've only built softwares to solve problems in my own business process. And I feel like the rest of the world is lucky I let them buy it. All right? So, so QB, solves, QB solves a lot of problems. You can just you know, follow me on Facebook, and you can, you can see my Facebook post. Um, but what you guys should be doing instead of following me on Facebook is you guys should be doing this. All right? You guys should be creating content every single day, literally every single day. Not, and I don't mean, what did you eat today? How are you feeling today? Check in that you don't have corona. You know, check in that you do have fucking corona. Whatever. You should be creating value. People should come to you because they know you are going to teach them something. Or you're going to, there are several different values that you can give people. One, entertainment, obviously. You make somebody laugh, and they live longer, right? And you could literally say, I just fucking added six years to your life. Give me some money. You know, I made you laugh. <laughs> you know, it, entertainment for sure. So entertainment. Information. Save somebody some time. There's lots of different, all right, so emotional connection, right? There's times where I just go and I share, and I don't do it. Uh, it's a nice byproduct that getting somebody to connect with you emotionally also gets their wallets out and makes them want to buy stuff, all right? That's a nice byproduct. I do it because it helps me internalize my own problems and get them out of my chest. But lots of times, the values that I post, it's literally just how I dealt with some of my problems. It's an emotional, it's an emotional thing. So any of those things, people consider valuable. So that's all you should be doing. Provide as much value as you can, craft your offers, create your offers, and focus on this, all right? You do this long enough, people will come give you money, all right? 
My, my largest clients, literally my largest clients that I've ever had whenever we were, whenever we were doing this, the, the whole reason I was able to land those clients, and I'm talking about my largest client was $1.5 million contract, all right, from one person to build one software. And that client literally told them my price, they didn't want to pay, they got this. <laughs> literally, no, no negotiation whatsoever. Just, hey, no, this is, this is what I actually need to be able to build your stuff. Now, that's the same thing that you guys have to do. And whenever, and the reason I'm telling you that is because whenever people see that you're, that you're hungry for money, that you're willing to give a discount, that you just want money, then they don't want to do business with you because they feel like you're desperate. But the second you're like, hey, this is going to cost me $1.5 million, cost you $1.5 million, and they're like, ah, well, we can budget 1.2, and you're like, okay, well, fuck off, go find somebody else to build it, no problem. Then they're like, well, you know what? I, I think I want to work with this person because I can tell that they're not just hungry for money. They're not just hungry for money, all right? So make sure you guys create enough value, and once you create enough value, these people will come. And the last thing I'm going to leave you with it's what I call my ace up the sleeve. I've been using this for a while, and it's actually helped me a lot, all right? So the ace up the sleeve is do not post your discounts on the internet. Your best fucking offer, no one knows about, all right? Your best offer, don't ever put it on the internet, never. These things, like right now, you go out to my partner funnel, now, I'm gonna tell you this because we're here, all right? You can sign up for my partnership for $97 a month. You go to my funnel, when you go to my funnel, it tells you it's $70,000 one-time payment or $3,000 a month. Now, my best offer, you know where you get my best? Now, granted, you get a lot more with that than what you get for $97 a month, all right? But that $97 a month is not posted on the internet. That $97 a month, my process, you opt, I don't show you my price, you opt in through my sales funnel, and then once you opt in, you give me your name, your phone number, your email, then you go to my order page. While you're on my order page, my software, Chirply, it calls you up on your phone. It's like, yo, what's up, this is John, you're on my partner page, I see you checking it out, you wanna talk right now? Got a good deal for you, press one. They press one, we're instantly connected, and then I give them my ace of my sleeve. Then I can negotiate with them. Then I can offer them this $97 price. And guess what? They feel special. They're like, damn, I thought it was going to be $3,000 a month. 97, I'm in. How do I pay? Literally, you can go to my YouTube channel and you can watch ads that I run of people literally just on that phone call. How do I pay you right now? I'm going to pay you right now. Can I pay you right now? So your best offers, don't release this to the public. Your best offers, look, you guys probably all do this. You guys probably have something that you want to buy. You ain't bought yet. So, like two people bought my shit today and they were like, I've been thinking about this for a long time. Months. Like I've been looking into this for months. Well, how come you haven't bought yet? Because you've got stuff to do. All right. So if you just give your best offer out there on the internet, there's lots of people who aren't going to buy. But if you save that best offer, put it right up your sleeve, when that person's interested, you pull it out and you're like, hey, if you sign up right now, if you buy right now, I got this for you. And then you'll see like literally my conversions rates. They've doubled from doing that, from just going and set a, I haven't changed my pricing at all. I just stopped advertising that pricing and I stopped advertising my best offers. And I only do that now through private message, through a phone call, through private message, because that will get you to convert. That will get you to do something right now because it seems like I'm giving you a discount, all right? It seems like I'm giving you something special to get you to take action right now. If I put that offer all over the internet, oh, you're just gonna wait and be like, I can get that anytime I want. So your best offer doesn't go on the internet. That's it, that's, that's my whole blueprint. I know it wasn't a real blueprint, but 